Welcome to the Welsh Woodman Workshop and in tonight's project we're going to be using this piece of kiln dried pine so it's just an off cut we're going to try and turn an arty style winged bowl and I'm going to be basing this bowl around the different elements so I hope you really enjoyed tonight's project and remember if you do I've got lots of videos on my YouTube channel so if you hit the subscribe button down below you can see upcoming videos and you can check out some of the other videos I've put on the Welsh Woodman channel as well so I hope you enjoy so we're going to attempt to do a wing style bowl and we're going to need a, a sort of an attachment point to attach this bowl to the lathe and I'm going to be using a force in a bit So that 30mm force in a bit then we're going to put over my pin jaws and I'm going to expand that, those jaws into that mortise that we've created using the drill making sure this is nice and flat against the the surface of the jaws so it's nice and balanced. A good old tighten. Let's just dig it into the wood, that's good. I'm going to pull on that, I'm pulling that with all my weight so that's more and steady enough for a hold. <laughs> this is going to be an interesting one to turn, I think. So I'm standing over the line of fire for obvious reasons. I'm going to turn it on and gradually build up the speed. Seems about right there. This is going to be a fun turn, like a nice little fan. Right, we're going to be putting some health and safety equipment on. So I've got a power respirator to help keep my face, my eyes and my lungs nice and safe. The bowl gouge we're going to be using for tonight's project is a... Got a Celtic grind on there or Irish grind. Uh, if you're in the States it's known as a, an Ellsworth grind. But it's uh, Liam O'Neill in Ireland really made these popular. It's got a swept back sort of angle of... 55 degrees on the nose then, all the way around. So we're going to be using that to turn out the centre, make a bowl profile to begin with, turn back the wings, then we can remount this and turn the inside. And I think we're going to try and make this bowl piece look like fire. A circle I'm going to establish by feeding this in. That's going to be my bowl shape. So I want to turn away stuff either side of this now to get down so I can start making this bowl shape. Making sure my hands are going nowhere near this twirly bit. Okay, let's have a look how we're doing. So I've drawn, I'm going to score a line on this. We can see from the top. So this line I'm going to turn all the way back to. And I want this to look like as if this is emerging from the, the piece itself. So we're going to turn back to that line all the way across this length. And we're going to start establishing that bowl shape a little bit more then. So I'm keeping my flute of the gouge pretty open because I'm cutting ear log, ear log a lot of the time. Obviously the faster I can move this piece, uh, the more contact I'm going to have with the wood itself. I'm just doing some pull cuts now to remove material. Being really careful and not catching my arm on the, uh, the windy bits. So let's zoom in so we can have a look. So I want to face off this surface, make it nice and flat. We're so doing a sheer pull cut. So the body position itself, keeping my hand nice and close to my body, using my hips and my body to move with the, the piece itself, just to keep it nice and supported, especially as we're touching air log a lot of the time. Yeah, 
that's nice. So I've started to, hopefully you can see, establish the, the, the back side of that bowl there. Quite happy with that shape. We're gonna move along now and start turning away some of this wing material. So I'm gonna move my tool rest. I've got quite an unusual machine. It's something called a, a VB36. I'm just gonna undo the, the rest there and I can gauge where I need to bring this across. Always check it before locking it down. Full check, and we're good to go. I'm gonna start turning away more of this edge now on this side. Nice light cut, keeping the flute open. So the flute being that milled in grind into the gouge itself, by keeping it open, you're less likely to get a catch with the wing. Yeah, starting to get there. Just take it nice and slow. So with the physics involved in this, then if we think of this whole entire piece being like a running track, so the athlete at the centre of the running track, he could quite happily go at a slow pace and cover the the track around like this, whereas the guy on the outside of the running track would have to really sprint around to, to say at the same speed as the uh, the athlete in the middle. And that's what's happening as we're turning. So we need to take that into consideration as we're feeding our tools in. So towards the center, we can go quite slowly to get a nice fine cut. Towards the outside, we need to, to move at a different sort of rate than the center. So just keep that in mind if you're turning larger pieces. We're gonna keep on going now, quite like this rustic effect that we're getting from that. Just adjusting the tool rest again to our new position. Doing our spins again. And what I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change my idea. Rather than work into a straight line, you can tell I'm not an engineer by any means. I sort of make this up as I'm going along. I'm gonna do, I want this to be like a flame. Let's go. Like that. Then I'm going to convert the top. I'll turn the top opposite to what I've got planned there. Yeah, that's going to work. So hopefully you can see I've got this wavy line I've just drawn on. I'm going to try and follow that wavy line when I come to do my turnings. And when I flip this around and turn it from the other side, I'm going to try and evenly match that profile from the other side as well. See how we get on with this. Uh, so with this technique, obviously because you're cutting air a lot of the time, you have to sort of visualise the piece as being a, a solid piece all the way around. So we're getting these little grooves. I quite like the texture we're getting from these as well. So I'm just gonna refine these shapes a little bit. Then we can come up with a, another mortise mount there, flipping round, and we can start shaping the other side and hollowing out the bowl on the other side. So we're just doing some refining cuts now. And I'm trying, even though, even though this is spinning round, I'm trying always to cut downhill as I'm making my cuts, and that's gonna, rather than, you can see I've just done a downhill cut there, we zoom this in. You see, with the downhill cuts, we're getting smoother cuts than, than cutting uphill with your tearing fibers. So I'm gonna try and just refine, redefine this shape a little bit, and blend this in. You can see by really cutting down how I'm starting to smooth these cuts. Now I don't want to sand all these ridges away uh, when I come to doing the, the finish on this. I want people to see that this is actually being turned, not just cut out on a on a band so we can see that we've got the perfect curves to, to help us do that. 
Uh, right, we've got the end piece to sort of blend in now. Far better. Happy with all those curves now I've got in there. Um, yeah. So we can see the. It's going to be the outside shape of the Arty Flame Bowl. So we've got all our wood turning curves in there, which is good because we're going to want to keep those uh, for later on. So I'm just going to establish a little bit more on the outside of this bowl shape now. Then we can put a little mortise in the bottom and we can have fun in trying to turn the top profile matching the opposites of the, the bottom profile. So this is sort of kiln dried, so you're bound to get some dry bits, but in terms of lack of tear out, I'm quite happy with that. Quite texturous towards the other end. Right, putting in the mortise then. So I've got a pair of dividers that have been set to the size I need. So I'm trailing point is going downwards. I'm not touching with the other point, otherwise it'll snag. We'll get a nasty catch that way. We have a little point there in the bottom. So just using a little dovetail scraper to get the angle of my jaws perfect. So I might change this design on the go. We might even make this into a, a box maybe. We'll see how this goes. We can take this off now and get it remounted on the other side. So that's the underside shape. We can start working on the top profile now. So you can see that's what it looked like from the side. Now what I'm aiming to do is to try and turn away these areas so we have a natural dip following the profile. So easier said and done. We'll see how we get on. Let's think about this. Right, so I'm going to want to keep the centre piece in as long as possible to help support this. So I'm going to work on the wings first, I think that's sensible. So I've got the mass in the middle to hold it, then I can start establishing the box in the middle and we'll make a little lid to go along with this I think. So let's have a look on the outside of those lines I want to go and I'm going to turn this section back a little tiny bit. We're working these edges down, we should be. So you can see how it's matching up with the profile uh, along the piece now. So it's always a good idea to stop, keep stopping and checking rather than going too far. You can take wood off quite easily, but it's very, very difficult to put it back on. We've got a nice little knot in there we're playing with. Never done this before, so we're making up as I'm going along, but the, the way I can think of doing it is if I put the pencil on there, put that pencil line, I don't know how well we're going to see that. As it's spinning, I've got this pencil line there. So hopefully you'll be able to see these two pencil lines as the piece is spinning and we can work in between those then. Let's see if this works. There's that pencil line.
Yep, so on the inside of that pencil line there, look. Hey, this is working. So I've established the next area. Oh, a little bit over I can afford to go. Right, we're going to work our way in between these pencil lines now. Oh, I'm glad that works. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's probably a good idea to get this end piece sorted first so it's not vibrating as much. Let's take you on a little tour of what we've got so far then. So if you look at the side profile, we can see that I've tried to match the best I can the top and the bottom turnings, which has given us this sort of wavy shape. I was speaking to a, an amazing artist and turner called Derek Weidman, and his work is incredible. He does a lot of off multi-access and off-centre turning, uh, but he tends to keep his uh, turning lines in. He was saying that it gives the piece more authenticity and people can actually see that it's been turned on the lathe. So I, I quite like those. So I'm going to keep those into, into this piece. We might, it's looking a bit heavy, a bit chunky. I might trim some of these down, maybe on the bandsaw, just to make it look like flames, maybe. So we're going to focus on now the hollowing out the bowl, Re really easy. We might make this into a, a box, maybe, and turn a lid to go on the top. So I decided we're going to make this into a box. I'm going to establish where the rim of the box is going to be with a little parting tool. So I can turn in the centre now from there. This is the easy bit. This so is the using a push cut, then rubbing the bevel of the tool, working down on the wall. Leave it a tiny bit at the centre because I want to be checking my depth before I get down to my final one in case I go into that mortise. So just nice simple push cut, rubbing the bevel, a little bit of downwards pressure with my thumb there on the tool to keep it under the tool rest. And just working gradually away, trying to get a nice sort of even thickness on the wall, matching the outside profile. I want to leave a little rim there so I can put a, a box lid on. So as I'm getting towards the uh, the bottom of the box there, like it's not blending in the bottom, again, doing some push cuts. Ideally, you want one smooth transition from the, the top of the rim of the bowl all the way down into the bottom, and that will leave you less transition points. So this is the, the profile then. So I decided this piece looks a little bit too chunky, so I've just like freehand drawn some flames on there, and I'm going to cut these out now on my bandsaw. So I've got my goggles and ear defenders ready. So this is the shape we're sort of getting, then off the uh, the bandsaw. So we can start working on the lid, so I've got another off cut of pine. And I've made myself a little centre finding jig, and I found this so useful, you can pretty much make these free out of a scrap piece of wood. So you've essentially got a 90 degree line with a block of wood that's been screwed on, intersecting that 90 degree line. And you can draw a line on, rotate the piece, line on, rotate the piece. And where all these lines intersect into the middle, you found your uh, your centre point then. So we're going to be drilling again and mounting it up onto the lathe. So we're doing push cuts, rubbing on the bevel, so that grind angle to give you a nice smooth cut down. And we should be getting these long, thin, stringy shavings. We're rubbing the bevel right. I just need to turn off my machine before I move my tool post into position. It's always a good habit to do that. And you can see by doing these push cuts and, and getting the bevel constantly rubbing the work, I'll zoom in to make that easier to see, we're getting a really nice, smooth finish. So there's no tool marks or anything across the piece, so it's worth, worth keeping nice sharp tools and rubbing that bevel to give you that nice sort of cut. So 
So constantly rubbing that bevel of the tool so that grind angle round and so pushing that against and I'm able to get a nice cut then over the tool. And you can see the, the, the length of the shavings, long and stringy, that's what we're looking for. So I'm looking for a dome shape, so I just want to blend in the top now with the edge to get it nice and curved. So there's the side profile, so we're getting this curve. So this is just making a little mortise that we can remount this. Plus it's going to hide or become the mortise joint for the top we're going to put on. I'm going to want to try and make this piece look like water next. I'm going to match that up with the fire. So I'm going to use a little uh, Japanese technique called Shoshobi Ban, which is essentially burning this with the, the blowtorch. And I think we're going to use this on quite a few of our pieces today. This is so fun. So you just need to make sure you've got a fire extinguisher to hand with this technique, just in case. <laughs> And this works really well with softwoods like pine. I absolutely love using this technique because when we come to using the wire brush in a minute, the, you'll see a difference between the summer growth and the winter growth. And the great thing about this technique as well, you'll notice I haven't sanded in between doing my final sort of finishing cut and torching. <laughs> Going to be using a wire brush to brush away all the soot. And you want to sort of do this in the direction of the grain pattern. So any scratches you do put in then are in the, the direction of the lines. And I want to try and make this look like some water ripples or waves in the next step. So I want to try and really get rid of all of this soot. So you just want to look for see any scratches because these are going to come out in our final finish. So we want to take those scratches away. And what this wire brush is doing is it's opening up the pores. So we're going to be using a wood diner in a second. And I open up those end grain pores. It's going to help this wood die really soak into those and bring this piece to life hopefully. The lovely textured piece. So if you want to, ever want a quick, nice texture, that works really well. Now, how we're getting these different textures then? <coughs> the tree has two types of growth, so early and late, or summer and winter growth. The winter growth tends to be a little bit hardier because there's less sunlight uh, for photosynthesis for the trees to, uh, trees to grow. So they tend to be, they stay there more than the wider summer growth. And that's how we're getting these different sort of ripple patterns. We're going to be using a blue wood dye. So Fiddy's is the brand, I've got a, a blue wood dye in this case. So these are spirit stains, so they dry almost instantly, which is brilliant. It's just a paper towel over the top. Just a warning, if you get this stuff on your hands, it stays there for a few days. I'm just literally rubbing this on with the paper towel, making sure it's sinking in. Now, because we've blowtorch this, it's naturally going to have different tones coming through with this wood. So you want to put a little tiny bit on, a little bit goes a long way with this stuff. And because we've opened up those pores, it's going to really want to sink in. So we'll let that soak in and dry off. So that's just the first coat and you can really build this colour up so you can add 
more colour to some areas than others and you, you get a nice little shaded tone. But I'm just going to do a, a nice really simple, just one simple coat over the top for this one. So I'm going to remount this now to the lathe. Now if I put it on to the lathe there, I've got a little bit of gap in between the, the face of the the jaws and the actual piece. So I've just got a load of these little plastic rings I've machined and they're, they're perfectly flat and that just takes up a little bit of that slack which will help support the, the piece from wobbling and I'll give it a nice strong hold. So we're just using a dovetail scraper just to get the outside of that box sorted and hollowing out the box, exactly the same principle as with the last one, making sure my tool bell bevel is rubbing all the way down to the bottom, establishing the walls, making sure I've got an even wall thickness throughout. Then I can start working, hogging the material away from the middle. So I've got my tool handle down, rocking with my body, so the whole body's rocking, not just the, my arms, and that'll help me get this nice smooth curve. I'm just establishing the bottom a bit more, Again, being quite cautious because I don't want to be going into that mortise in the bottom. Get a nice flat bottom. Then I'm going to curve it in. All the way from the rim down into the bottom. One more cut to finish. Yeah, I like that. So I'm going to be using some sandpaper now just to sand back a tiny bit. And we're going to be using that Japanese technique, Shosho Biban, again, to blow torch this, scorch it, and wire brush this back. And we're going to do exactly the same as with the, the top. We're going to be adding a wood dyed finish using the same principle, so I'll just speed this section up. But it's quite nice in the fact that the top of the box and the, the inside of the lid of the box will, will match nicely. And I can do the same thing then on the flame section and we can have a look how that looks next. So I've just scorched and wire brushed this. Uh, I've left this overnight, I've had a big debate as to what I should do with this. I think I am going to add some colour even though the effect is pretty cool just as it is. So I'm going to be adding some more wood dyes over the top so we're going to do that now. So again, I'm going to be using a Fiddy's wood dye. I'm going to start out with a yellow tinter. And I'm going to put a base coat down in this yellow to make this a little bit more interesting. I'm going to speed this up. It's exactly the same uh, technique as before. So we've let this piece dry and there's the sort of flamey pattern we're getting throughout. So see the different yellows and the oranges and the reds coming through and more so then on the uh, the back side so lid on top we're gonna need a little holder for the lid so I want to get all the elements in so I've got fire and water and I thought about wind I, and I wanted it to be like a, a wind related wood thing and the first thing that popped into my head was the sycamore seeds so as they spin off the the tree like helicopters so I've done a little bit of drawing so draw out a seed cut it out on the bandsaw and I've done a little bit of wood whittling with a, a whittling knife and I've got this little seed pod type thing. So what I want to do next is turn a little base that I can attach this seed pod and that will be coming off the top then as a little grip handle for the lid. So we're going to get that turned now to plug this gap and what I was thinking for the base to again keep it with a tree theme but in, in the form of earth is to use this little slab, we'll cut this down and we'll turn a transition piece then to go into the bottom of this so it'll be like levitating up hopefully at the end. So we're going to need to wood turn the transition piece to make an interference fit into this and to allow this to, to sort of sit on top and what I'm going to use for that is just a loft cut of a bit of tulip wood I've had knocking around for a while so we need to centre this to begin with. So a quick way of doing that is use your finger as a gauge, all four edges. In the middle of that sort of area there, that's going to be your uh, your centre point. The same on the other side. Centre point there. So we're going to be putting these in between a 
spur drive in centre and this is a Robert Sorby one, little spring loaded centre then it has all these little teeth around the edge so it gives you a nice good grip and just to give the back a little bit more support we've got a sort of ring type centre there at the back so I prefer using those to, uh, to sort of cone centres as cone centres act a little bit more like a wedge compared to uh, the ring centres, just get a little bit more support so we're going to line up those little cross marks with the centre points bring up the centre tail and the tailstock so it's right in the middle lock it down feed in the quill, so this section here nice tight grip now I'm currently using this little hobby lathe as my pull wood speed controller is still out of action and it's quite difficult because the lathe is so old to find a replacement for it so we're going to set the tool rest give this a good spin a little tip I picked up from Adrian a brilliant turner is to rotate the piece backwards and it knocks the uh, knocks the tool rest to where it needs to be we're going to be using a roughing gouge to rough this into the round there we go so we're going to put it onto the tool rest, handle down, we're going to find the bevel, so that grind angle, place that onto the work, we're going to lift it up then and we'll get it to cut. So we're going to wood turn this into the round first of all, then we'll set a pair of outside calipers to find the size this needs to be. Find the bevel, lift up. Working in from out to get rid of the uh, edges. If you work out from in, you're more likely to tear along the uh, line. Find okay. Tool on top, we're getting bouncing, as you can see there. Still not into the round, so we can take a little bit more off. Okay, lovely greens in that tulip wood. Right, we're going to be using an outside dividers. I've welded on two washers. There's a little tip I picked up from uh, Mike Hasselden. I'm going to be putting this outside di diameter, set it, and I can come from behind then with these outside calipers and the washers just give you a little bit more of a smoother entry as you come in. in. So we're going to be using these along with a, a parting tool and that's going to reduce this down to the diameter we need put this on this in two because we're not going to need the entire thing okie doke so we've got these two parted off so the piece that we're interested in is this piece here so we're going to make that into like a, a round cap so we're going to have to put it into the four jaws of the chuck now so just untake the spur out and I find by putting the spur into the uh, the jaws rather than the uh, the more taper of the machine is just a little bit quicker in transitioning between oop, between steps. So I'm going to want to use my uh, spindle gouge now. I've got a continental grind on it to sort of roll this into a ball shape. Let's establish this shape then. It's 
So this is going to essentially become like a little dowel pin that's going to be going into the uh, into the sycamore thing in a second. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling back on the tool slightly. Zoom you out so you see again. So as I'm pushing this in, I'm pulling back, you see with that little finger. And that allows me to rub the bevel of the tool, which will give me a little bit of a smoother cut. So I'm pulling back to rub the bevel, just in the angle so I can cut. And I'm going to get a nice smooth cut because of that. So I'm pushing the tool in lightly. If it's nice and sharp, it should be skating across quite easily. Nice curve from the top to the bottom, not feeling any ridges in there. Let's have a look how we're doing. We've got a nice transition point now that's going to go into there. And I want it to look nice and light to go into the bottom. I'm going to take that down a tiny, tiny bit more at the top with my skew just so it'll fit inside easier. So essentially I've created a, a little dowel at the top there where we can connect these and I want to do a slight roll over so it transitions nicely. Look. See I've rolled a slight bead there, in, inwards, or cove I should say. Right, let's keep that on top. We can drill a little hole in there and that's going to fit in nicely. So I've just put it a little bit further out in the jaw so we can add a lacquer. I'm going to go for a melamine lacquer. So if people are touching this you want a nice hardy sort of lacquer on top there. That should help. The colours come out as well a little bit. So to keep in time with everything else, we're going to use this as our transition piece from the, the plank at the bottom to hold the, uh, the wing bowl up. So we've got our tenon ready from last time. Nice and tight in there. Now we're going to need to do a tenon on the other end, exactly the same size then as the, uh, the hole in the bowl. And we're going to be using our little dividers, so our outside calipers, sorry, to help us do that from the, the back again over here. Right. Let's go. Always a good idea to have a check before we move on. Get this guy out of the way. A little bit loose. Do a little bit of a tapered joint then on this one to help us with that problem. So I've turned that a slight taper so it gets thicker towards the bottom. Right, we're gonna have a bit of fun with the skew chisel now. So we're going to need to come up with some transition points. So I think I'm going to do a little cove in the middle. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do some V-cuts. got my little cove, it's going to be where I'm going to be sort of parting this piece off. So I just want to roll a bead on the top to sort of blend it in with the top so it doesn't look like a sharp point. So a nice smooth transition and if you notice the way I'm cutting is I've got the tool canted on its side, I'm only cutting with about one third of the edge. Uh, if you cut with the entire edge, I find that you're going to get a nasty snag and a catch, so cutting downhill. 
as I'm getting towards the center, I want to make a transition point, so a feature. So I've put in a, a little bead, rolling that bead over then with a short point of the skew. Now towards the top of this, I want to really bring the, the size down to make it look more balanced. And I want to get it down to a hole size that's going to fit into the, the base. So I'm going to establish that, but I want to part it off there. Roll a slight bead again to make sure it blends in more. I can just play around with the proportions of this. Sorry, I haven't got a top view. I've only got one camera at the moment. Blend that in. I want to, I'm cutting uphill there, so I want to blend that. So I want to go downhill right to the bottom of that cove. There we go. A little bit of sanding next to smooth this guy up. Then we can establish where we want to part this off using a parting tool. <laughs> So we're not going to put the finish on the parts we're going to glue later on. We'll be using a knife parting tool to part this guy off. So we're going to put this all together now, the top lid part. So using a bit of PVA glue, a Gorilla glue I quite like using, or tight bond, they're my favourite sort of types of PVA glue, really strong, long lasting. I want to orientate this so the grains sort of match up the best I can with the uh, existing grains on there. A little bit of PVA in a little hole I've drilled the same diameter as the little dowel peg I've turned on the so like that. We're gonna let that dry. We come back to it then. Right, we're gonna sort out this base now. So I've just set in the, the bottom, using those drill holes to, uh, to help set in. Just going to put some PVA glue again onto the top of this. Let this dry into place. Come on. There we go. I've uh, just got a little log there. So I want to angle this perfectly into place, that log. It's just going to help this sit flat. So here's the completed piece. I've just given it two spray coats of lacquer just to really seal in the colour and it gives it this sort of darker but more richer look to the uh, to the wood dyes itself. So what I was trying to convey then with this piece, I've got the natural edge bark with the moss growing on it to represent the earth and it's sort of nicely wood related as well. Little spindle, simple spindle going into the, the fire. You can see it. See how it looks then, underneath. And the lid itself representing water, so that you see the, the ripples there on the lid to represent the, the waves or, or water ripples. And the sycamore seed on top to represent the sycamore seeds blowing in the wind. So that's the piece all together. Quite an arty piece, not really my normal style of turning. I tend to do more sort of craft type pieces or production turning. But it'd be interesting to hear your views in the comment as to how you think it looks. And if you'd like some more videos like this, put a comment below. Also, if you have any questions about this process or wood tin related, uh, feel free to ask those below and I'll try my best to answer them for you. So if you really enjoyed tonight's video, hope to see you on future videos. And if you haven't done so already, please remember to subscribe to the Welsh Woodman YouTube channel as that really supports me in getting more videos like this your way. Thank you so much for watching to the end. Hope you have a great night. Diolch yn fawr. Nostar.